the topic for today's session. Um, and I think um, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to talk about this um, topic um, after a wonderful discussion at ISPAD, which I had the opportunity to attend with uh, with um, all the eminent people from India. And uh, Dr. Sabu really wanted to showcase what happened at ISPAD and finally dissipate what was learned um, at ISPAD through the um, through the best of ISPAD sessions. So I hope I can deliver what we kind of learned uh, at ISPAD. And I hope this is helpful for everybody in India. And I'm, I will be happy to take any questions at the end of the session. So my topic for today is managing diabetes in challenging environment. I actually work in the type 1 diabetes global health equity department as a research fellow um, at Brigham and Women's Harvard Medical School. And we my research basically involves around implementation of diabetes care and understanding the inequities in um, healthcare delivery models uh, across the globe. So the key points before we begin is to understand that there have been wide advancements in diabetes over the globe. And uh, diabetes has improved, uh, these advancements have improved the quality of life and glycemic control in people living with type 1 diabetes. However, a large subset has still been left behind. Um, and those who have been left behind have continued to be at higher risk for diabetes complications. And they are also the, those people with deep rooted inequities and disparities within our fragmented healthcare systems. Now, if you see these wide inequities and duality in the global health continue to exist between the global north and the south. Uh, in global health, we basically see the, something called the brand line, which basically clearly shows the, dis, the, the, the deep inequities and disparities in care. But now over the years, this, this brand line is way more complex because even within the developed countries, there are wide inequities and disparities. And the less developed countries or the developing countries are still left behind. And a lot of diabetes uh, inequities continue to exist even with the advancements in technologies. So my outline for my talk would be uh, based on these following uh, steps. And uh, I would like to introduce the background around the diabetes uh, inequities and then and uh, then finally understanding what are the opportunities for integrated care models and as a research fellow in the Center for Integration Science, how we are working towards with WHO and trying to achieve the targets for improving um, the diabetes care globally, especially in the lesser developed in low resource settings. So to understand the disparities in diabetes care, it is important to see, and I'm sure a lot of people have, are familiar with this, uh, with this study by Lipman and Hawks in diabetes care, that the diabetes outcomes are very closely related to the social determinants of health and the disparities in diabetes are are very complex because of these social determinants of health. However, these measures of social determinants of health um, are associated with suboptimal uh, glycemic control and are not routinely addressed by the healthcare professionals in routine clinical practice. And to address these disparities, we need to find an approach and find out uh, uh, the opportunities to include social determinants of health in our healthcare delivery models. So uh, we are all convinced that our, our health systems are not organized for long-term chronic care of individuals, but rather for managing the acute care. The management of diabetes requires regular supply of drugs, data collection systems, trained healthcare teams, and educated, empowered patients, in addition to the health services tailored to the social and cultural needs to determine good cl clinical outcomes. Now, when we see all of this, this seems to be a very ideal situation to achieve good glycemic outcomes. But when it comes to complex situations where there are challenges of food insecurity, when there are challenges of supply chain issues, when there are challenges of uh, um, patients not able to understand what, what's happening with their diabetes treatment, and they're not part of the decision-making process. These inequities are way more di way more diverse. So to understand uh, and quickly to uh, surpass through how the, uh, the global diabetes burden is on a rise, uh, we will see that over 386 million people uh, are living with type 1 diabetes, and it is predicted that this number will only increase. These stats are terrifying for what seems to be a very manageable conditions. However, this, this rise is not just 
because of the people are surviving longer, but also a lot of people are getting diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. But we have to realize that as more and more people are getting diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, there are also huge barriers in the psychosocial uh, challenges that are coming up uh, causing increased burden to our healthcare systems. So when we see, to summarize this situation, we often see the rules of halves and we say that people... Out of the total people with diabetes, only half of them are are actually correctly diagnosed with diabetes and half of them re, uh, receive the recognized care and only half achieve the glycemic targets. Now, uh, I, I want to switch your attention towards what are the challenges? Now, these are the challenges in a normal scenario, but these challenges are much more profound in complex environments. What do I mean by complex environments? Complex environments where people, other than the socio-political environments of health uh, system organization, are also battling through the social determinants of health, not having access to food, not having access to uh, to um, sustainable uh, supplies for managing diabetes, not even having one test strip to check their blood sugars. So there are diagnostic challenges where physicians cannot diagnose or differentiate between type of diabetes. There are high rates of misdiagnosis due to lack of diagnostic tools and infrastructure. Yes, we are in the 21st century, but these diagnostic challenges still continue to exist. And it is disheartening to say when you are there and you don't have the equipment to actually do the test and to make a diagnosis. Now, the challenges are, are also there at the supply chain level. A lot of patients are living in the outskirts and they're long distance from the health centers. It is also crucial to understand that most of the diabetes services are delivered at the tertiary care centers. A lot of people cannot travel and hence the care cannot be delivered. There are misdiagnoses and people land up into tertiary care centers with high rates of complications because the care is not delivered at the primary health centers. There are uh, challenges at the referral level where people land up in DKA complications, which could have been easily picked up or easily diagnosed at an earlier stage and the patient could survive. So the availability of specialities for referral are also uh, unavailable at primary care centers. So it is crucial to understand that these complex challenges make diabetes diagnosis way more difficult. Now, there are tough management questions which continue to exist. Are food insecurity. A lot of people living with diabetes have to choose between food on the table or to take their insulin. And it is very sad. And it, these these uh, situations are very draconian because you you cannot do anything as a clinical provider when you your patient doesn't have food on his table to uh, manage his uh, blood sugars. So we need to address these gaps of food insecurity and addressing the literacy gaps in patient education and awareness. Also, I think this cultural stigma around diabetes and chronic diseases is so deeply rooted in our system that we need to work in collaboration with lots of uh, nonprofit organizations to improve the education and also improve the peer community support around diabetes care. Also, the tough management question that comes is the political instability and crisis like we saw with the Ukraine uh, war and how people could not access diabetes care just because of the political instability. So in one of the papers which was recently published, uh, they tried to understand the comparative health system assessment and saw that the beyond insulin, various health system factors are actually uh, responsible and can impede care. Financial burden of care remains significant and many diabetes-related supplies are not available or affordable to people with type 1 diabetes. Now, in Kyrgyzstan, A1C kits are not available in uh, in the public sectors. and in Mali and Peru, they continue to remain unaffordable. So often people do not get themselves tested. Uh, the, the doctors cannot make the diagnosis correctly. And thus high rates of misdiagnosis continue to exist, even in the 21st century. So uh, I want to emphasize on the fact that uh, we have seen a lot of advancements. But when it comes to complex scenarios, uh, people are still struggling to get at least one test in a day to even check their blood sugars. So I had the opportunity to work uh, with my team um, in um, at Center for Integration Science and had the chance to uh, spend three months in Malawi where we tried to improve diabetes care in training clinical providers there. So from the experiences I had, 
there were not just challenges of lack of access to insulin, but also deep rooted challenges where patients can, could not even have food on their table. There were challenges of, um, of not having peer support, not able to understand what's happening with their disease and also unable to be an, an essential part in their diabetes management care. So I, I think I used the type one index to understand how it was, uh, how the situation was in Malawi. And it, it made me so grounded when I was there to see that even with the best of the technologies, the best of the uh, information we have, we cannot deliver the best of the care because of a lot of other barriers in these complex situations. And the T1D index currently clearly says that if we had the appropriate uh, toolkit to actually correctly diagnose patients, we would have had over 15,923 people who would have been alive today in Malawi. And I think these numbers are almost similar to what it is in India as well. And these challenges continue to exist. So um, this is a very important study, which um, which I think was also shared at ISPAD to understand that the level of type 1 diabetes care in children and adolescents for countries at varying resource levels and what should be the ideal um, aim for comprehensive care, even in resource limited conditions. So this was a paper by uh, Graham Ogle, um, and uh, it was uh, it clearly aims for comprehensive diabetes care in complex environment and showcases that yes sometimes it is unrealistic to do three tests or four tests in a day but in in situations of limited care like minimal care there are still certain things which we need to cater to and through collaborative approaches we can improve diabetes care even in complex environments so um uh, another thing i wanted to point out was that uh, when we talk about complex environments. We have to cater to what happened in humanitarian crisis, like the Ukra Ukrainian war. And we know the essential diabetes medicines are so critical. And this becomes even more essential when it comes to humanitarian response and should be integrated into routine care. Now, humanitarian crisis and diabetes have been increasing at an unrelenting pace. And there are large num numbers of migrant populations who are, who are living with type 1 diabetes and are still facing the challenges of getting access to insulin and essential diabetes supplies. So one of the papers in was recently published in Lancet talks about the, uh, the diabetes in humanitarian crisis and also why it is essential when we are aiming for 100% access to type 1, 100% uh, access to insulin for all people living with type 1 diabetes, how we can involve and include these people who are migrant population and who do not have a place called home. So um, yes, there have been a wide change in the global health equity, but uh, there is no progress in global health equity over the course of 2010 to 20. 20, and you can see clearly that a lot of uh, the lot of the health budget has gone into infectious diseases and diabetes continues to be left out. What is the way forward? Why is type 1 diabetes care not reaching the poorest in remote areas? We know a lot of NCD initiatives have focused on integrated care models at health centers, at tertiary care centers. Less complex conditions have been focused, but type 1 diabetes continues to be left behind. Now, the existing efforts in low middle income countries are largely delivered through health centers, which are far out of reach from uh, patients who are living in very remote areas. We need to think about pathways for integration and sustainability and ensure that the lethal gap for healthcare delivery is, is addressed. So I want to introduce you to uh, the, uh, the, a package of integrated care, which our team at Center for Integration Science is working on. And um, this, this package of WHO package of essential non-communicable disease interventions has been uh, incorporated by, the, uh, by many of the African countries, and it is also in, uh, adopted by the, uh, by, at the WHO Health Assembly. So PEN Plus is basically part of the ecosystem of chronic care, and the aim of the PEN Plus is through this integrated model. It is trying to overcome these barriers of complex health systems and making sure these the health care systems are delivered at the first level hospitals, which are the district hospitals. And 
uh, also ensuring that the mid-level providers are able to identify and reduce the burden of diabetes and ensuring type 1 diabetes is delivered to the poorest of the person. So um, some of the work of the NCDI Poverty Network and Pen Plus is focused on uh, this, this African countries and also in, involving the new Pen Plus sites in Nepal, Chhattisgarh, Bangladesh and Cambodia. So Pen Plus is an integrated model which focuses on health equity and increasing the access and uh, for the poor, those living in rural areas and also ensuring the access to chronic care for severe NCDs. Um, also uh, need to focus that this is this is primary training of the mid-level care providers, such as nurses and clinical officers, and to ensure that through this integrated package model, we are able to deliver services to, uh, and making the best use of the resources. So um, Pen Plus is about training these mid-level providers, the nurses, clinical officers, and other frontline uh, clinicians who are, who are at these hospitals, ensuring that healthcare is delivered and we are able to save lives at the at the basic level and where it can be diagnosed early. So uh, to summarize and not to take much of the time uh, on 10 plus, um, I want to emphasize on the fact that type 1 diabetes care is complex. And this is much more profound in these complex environments where people are struggling with access to basic health necessities and basic uh, lifestyle, uh, basic health rights. So despite these increasing efforts from various sectors and stakeholders, Type 1 diabetes is still a challenge and we need to focus on integrated sustainable solutions. Now, at the 2022 World Health Assembly, the Pen Plus World had incorporated, uh, was incorporated, but also along with that, the WHO member states endorse the target of 100% access to insulin for all people living with type 1 diabetes these are one of this is one of the targets along with the other five targets which were which were uh, endorsed uh, at the assembly also the ispad 2022 uh, guidelines are currently under underway and they are also addressing in how we can essentially manage type 1 diabetes in limited resource settings and how uh, one of the uh, uh, tables you saw by the paper from dr graham ogul uh, on uh, how even in the resource limited conditions, how we can achieve the targets for minimal care. This is not easy. And yes, it is easy to say, it, but this requires interlinkages of a lot of parameters, education of healthcare providers at mid level, at mid level, and also educating uh, the clinical providers at all resource centers, awareness and wider community education and peer support. Or, uh, implementation strategies for the complex humanitarian settings, and finally, health systems training, advocacy, and improving capacity in diagnostics. So, lesser misdiagnoses happen, and more people living with type 1 diabetes can be picked up and given access to what they actually deserve. So, uh, ultimately, I just want to say that um, Yes, this is an urgent call to action and a global movement of solidarity needs to be achieved. And especially through comp through the focus on complex environment, a large portion of the global south and large portion even within the global north is still struggling with disparities in diabetes care with the advancements in technology. So our focus should be to... Um, like I think we will talk about it uh, uh, when Dr. Graham Ogle and Tom Robinson is going to present about how we are still leaving so many people who are left behind and so many people can achieve a better diabetes uh, outcome, just improving uh, through a collaborative model and through improving care uh, to the poorest of the billions. So thank you for um, thank you for giving me a chance to present and uh, uh, thank you for, I'm open to answer any questions uh, that come along. Thank you.